This is you throwing. Ugh. And this is you catching. <sighs> That's wonderful mime work. <laughs> I guess you're just good at everything. <gasps> oh, no, 2.0. I have a bone to pick with both of you. Hope it isn't kings. He needs it to play catch. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and we're here to talk to you about the Owl House. Or more specifically, Owl or Play. Owl or 2, Electric Boogaloo. And I'm sorry if this video and the one after it sound kind of weird. I had to record it in a classroom of all places. Since this is move out week and my dorm was really noisy. Yes, heck of who was the last video I got to record in my dorm. At least until August. Ironic considering how Glossaric was the last video I got to record in my basement. If you hear a weird ticking sound, I think it's a clock. I'm sorry, I can't control that. So season 2B of the Owl House is in full swing and I have yet to make a video on it. How is it? Really good. Seriously, I've appreciated what they've done with the characters, especially Kiki. Did I pass? Unfortunately, yes. So, what do I get? You get to live. It's a major shame they got the pillow put over their head so soon. Thankfully, they will also join the ranks of other shows that have succumbed to tall poppy syndrome, like Final Space, Infinity Train, and Wander Over Yonder. I guess some of you might have wondered, holy titan, why hasn't Kitty made a single video on this yet? Well, to be honest, I don't want my videos to end up being wrong a couple weeks later. And yes, I have seen the comments you guys post on my other videos, especially Emperor Bellows. Honestly, that was just a joke. I told you, I read every comment I get. It's the only way you improve. No joke, I was gonna make a video on Philip Wittabane after the time travel episode, but I held off because of my every other week system. And that was likely for the better considering the episode Hollow Mind exists. I don't have any major complaints so far, mostly because the second half seems to be going out of its way to address criticisms. Like the fact Skara barely got any screen time, despite her closeness to Amity, or how they wrote Lilypad out of the show, when her redemption arc was still in progress, or how they swore that Willow and Amity still had baggage to work out, and yet barely share two lines together that doesn't include the topic of Luz. Have you ever heard of the Bechdel test? You should do a version of it for the Owl House, especially with Amity, but they have to talk about something other than Luz. I guess the only downside is some of my theories were incorrect, but that is nothing against the show. One episode even explained fan theories pretty well. Well, I had fun coming up with those theories. They were like our own stories. Right now, the characters I'm definitely going to make videos on, in no particular order, are Hunter, Lilith, Ellos, Tara, Rain, King, and Darius. Maybe an apology video for Kiki, but I have to see what they eventually end up doing with her. For now, we're discussing Alador and his relationship with his children, as of reaching out. Nine months ago, give or take, the episode Escaping Expulsion aired, which properly introduced us to the Blight parents. In the episode, Amity bombs a presentation for Blight Industries, and her mother, Odalia, finds it's because she has friends. How evil. Next thing you know, she'll want, ugh, privacy and boundaries. But Amity, in your mama's defense, why did you bring an incriminating photo to a public event? Especially since you know your parents don't like you hanging out with weaklings. You're like Fantine from Les Mis. To this end, Odalia blackmails Bump into having Loose Gus and Willow executed. <coughs> I mean expelled. Oh, thank you again, Alador. But they do tell Luz if she wants to talk things through, she can come by Blight Manor. They reach a deal that if Luz helps out with their upcoming demonstration, they'll let her and her friends back into Hexide. Only, it turns out that as part of the deal, Luz has to face their newest invention, the Abomaton 2.0, which per Odalia, It won't rest until its enemy is completely eliminated. Amity, for likely the first time in her life, stands up to her parents, telling them that if they don't let Luz and her friends back in, she'll destroy the Abomaton in front of their investors. Odalia reluctantly agrees, but soon decides to go back on her word. I will call every authority I know. I'll make sure they can't- Odalia! You made a deal with your daughter, and a blight always upholds their end of the deal. 
this episode aired, many people praised Alador or made excuses for him, especially on places like Reddit and Instagram. Many painted him as a helpless victim, a puppy dog swung along by his forceful queen haired wife. This I did not like. Sure, Alador was a funny character, but that doesn't change the fact that he's a neglectful father who stands back and lets Odalia play dollhouse with their family. Now, you'll be taking double the classes to make up for lost time. Actually, I'm appalled that you're not in class right now. What are you thinking? Melanie Martinez would have a field day writing songs for the Blights. At least Gwen had good intentions, and she still loved her daughter, she just thought they didn't need her. People would tell me, oh, well, Dally is abusing him too, but we don't know that for certain. Nothing we ever see on screen makes me think he's a victim. But when it comes to toxic or abusive parents, silence is violence, especially when you're the adult in the situation. I also didn't like people pointing out Aldor might potentially have some kind of disability, like autism or ADHD. That's an explanation, not an excuse. Not to mention, we know that if he puts his foot down or stands his ground, Odalia will listen. Him telling Odalia to back off wasn't because she was going to kill an innocent child or because she's being mean to Amity, but because Amity's getting stronger. She's getting stronger. Strong enough to become a Covenhead someday. Wise words, dear. We have to focus on what's best for the family. And because, implicitly, it would be bad for business to ground Amity in front of their entire client base. Besides, the flashback from Understanding Willow exists. Odalia wasn't the only one doing the talking. Blights only associate with the strongest of witchlings. You may choose a new friend from one of the suitable companions we invited. Sever your ties with Willow, and if you don't... Then we will. <laughs> but again, I will concede he is a funny character. That expelled comment was hilarious. So you know who else is a funny character but a terrible dad? Steven Stotch. But as you get back to quarantine or you are gonna be grounded! My initial video, though short compared to what I usually post now, ended up becoming one of my most popular at the time. And on views alone, it's still my highest rated video for the Owl House. The second video I did on Lilith got me into reviewing Disney cartoons. Alador showed me I could do it full time. Recently, Alador went the way of other characters like Queen Moon, Mabel, and Una. He finally hit 100,000 views. TY, guys. So, as a thank you, we're gonna ask ourselves another question Is Alador Blight still a bad parent? Let's discuss. Watching his initial episode, I didn't think we'd see much of him afterwards. At best, I thought he would be like the Northwest parents, where he might appear in minor ways or be mentioned. But after his part was played, he wouldn't have a big role. Like them, he was meant to be a fantasy version of something we see all too often in real life. But I'd argue Aldor being an enabler is 10 times more relatable than using a bell to make your child behave. Also, before I get to the episode where he changes, I want to give a little more background, since they did reveal one or two things about him afterwards. At the end of Escaping Expulsion, word gets out about the Obamaton 2.0, and Bello sends Hunter to broker a deal with the Blights. The Emperor will be buying every one of your Obamatons and will personally fund research into making them stronger. They're honored to have- You should be. Emperor Bellos doesn't take kindly to citizens making a private army. Afterwards, the Obamatons are added to Bellos' arsenal. Still, Alador was a constant presence. In Eda's Requiem, we meet the head of the Abomination Coven, Darius. Also, I know I said he'd probably get his own video, but I have to say that I love Darius. Next to Tira, he's my favorite coven head. I was scheduled for some me time today, so hand yourself over before things get nasty. Darius seems to hold a grudge against Alador for a weird reason that's never really commented on. I told you we didn't need help. So get that ugly thing out of my face, and tell Alador he's a hack while you're at it. Considering what we know now, I like to think it's because Darius considers him a sellout. Even if he and Odalia are running the Boiling Isles version of Apple meets ADT, they're still just making regular old abominations. Darius can literally turn himself into one, and he answers to nobody but the Emperor. That, or I wouldn't be surprised if it's an open secret, the Blights are helicopter parents. Anyway, I babbled on long enough, let's actually get to the episode. One morning, Luz is awoken by a cell phone notification. Today, she has an important event with Camilla, but with her and her mama being separated, Luce can't do it. And it seems to be really important as she wants to avoid it at all costs. Being relatable once again, Luce tries to repress her emotions by overwhelmingly distracting herself with major tasks. Uh, feeling okay, Luce? I feel great! 
Today's gonna be a productive day of problem solving. Can you just put your phone on Do Not Disturb or shut the notification off? It takes like two seconds. Look at this. Did you steal my pentagram? I borrowed it because I've got a castle insider getting info on Bellows. See, Ponyhead? This is what you do. I'm super surprised that Luce doesn't have a scroll. Can Ido only afford one? I'm sure a burner scroll or a flip scroll would do the trick. If only Ida had money, then she could splurge on an eye scroll. When Ida and King probe, Luce does admit she has some mental stuff going on. You're avoiding something. Spill it. I am not. Maybe I am. Okay, I definitely am. Also, I like that Ida's the one who realizes something's up, since all this really seems like something Ida would do, or has done in the past. A few seconds later, Amity comes over to tell Luce about her family troubles. Dad, look! It's the Bonesboro Brawl tonight. And since I'm finally old enough to participate, I, I was thinking... Dad! Believe it or not, reaching out is another homage to Avatar, as Amity wants to compete in the Earth Rumble. I mean, the Bonesboro Brawl. It's an event where a bunch of witches fight, and the winner gets to face last year's champion, who turns out to be Warden Rap. If he's defeated, they can claim his title, and the coveted Brawler's Belt. Wait, I thought Hunter said you only get one day off a year, or is that only for Coven Scouts or newbies? Just to add, I don't particularly mind the fact they keep homaging Avatar, on top of having Katara's original actress. It's kind of like them taking cues from Gravity Falls. There's a difference between homaging and stealing. Stealing is soulless. You're just making your copying obvious. And you're not realizing what went into it that made it so successful and beloved. Homaging is what they're doing here. Taking inspiration from the past and making it something of their own. The Owl House is one of the best shows when it comes to homaging. The only time I didn't really like it was in Wing It Like Witches. As pointed out by some of you in the comment section of my Scara video, they basically stopped the episode to complain about Harry Potter. And as I'm somebody who hasn't really watched the movies or read the books, I didn't get the joke. That just invalidates all our efforts. If catching that thing is so important, why do anything else? There's no reason to watch any of the other players. That's such a stupid rule. Anyhow, the Bonesboro Brawl is important to Amity, since Alador used to be a champ before he grew up and got boring. Yuck. Unfortunately, after remembering he has a daughter, Alador doesn't want Amity there. Not because it's unsafe, but because tonight there's tryouts for the Emperor's Coven, and Amity is going whether she wants to or not. Oh, and he still calls her- Mittens. You might as well cut her steak too. To help her get to try out safely, he made her a chaperone, which sticks out like a sore purple thumb. Ah! This thing is so embarrassing, I even tried disguising it. Yeah. I actually think Ida has the same outfit. Yeah, totally state of the art. I'm sure you'd let it help Granny cross the street. In a nice show of character development, Amity tries to say she doesn't want to go, but Alador is too distracted to take no for an answer. I don't want to go to coven tryouts. I want to enter the brawl and maybe win the champion belt. I goofed off a lot back then, but you have a bright future and shouldn't waste it on that nonsense. Uh, but You're welcome. Actually, it's weird you wouldn't want her to enter. Wouldn't that be an amazing resume booster? I'm sure tryouts aren't held once a year. In a shocking turn of events, Amity reveals to Luce that she wants nothing to do with the Emperor's Coven. In fact, she doesn't even want to join a coven. Period. I don't even want to join a coven anymore. Called it. But Luce says she should participate anyway. Did somebody say Bonesboro Brawl? I used to love going to those. Your pops was great in duels. Wait, why didn't you enter? Or did you ever participate? I need answers. Still, there's the matter of the Abomaton. Abomination? Fetch me a, uh, rare and, and difficult to find emerald dagger from the night market. That'll keep him busy. Guys, if it comes back, be sure to send it off to find a hydrodynamic spatula with port and starboard attachments and the turbo drive. Hey, hey mittens. mittens. Ooh, it's the Blight Twins. Family lore. Edric and Amira decide to help Amity disguise herself for the brawl, down to giving her their concealment stones. Found it! <laughs> Here's mine too, for a little extra flair. What? 
they don't look perfect despite the fact they're 16 and 16 year olds are still developing. Actually, I want to comment on this. Last November, I made a video on the Blight Twins, mostly to talk about the possible relationship they have with their parents. I mean, Amity has to dye her hair and cut off Willow, and yet they don't seem to get the same treatment. The most popular response I got was the Blight Twins are ignored by their parents. Maybe at one point they were abused too, but Amity showed more potential, or she was easier to control. So she became the golden child, while Etric and Emera became the lost children. It's still bad they aren't getting attention, but as we see from Encanto, there are some benefits fits, and I'm using that word lightly, as they aren't being held to high expectations. And unlike Amity, there's no image to uphold. Well, I'd say that's pretty true here. Elidor doesn't speak two words to his eldest children. He isn't like, Edric, Emera, you're helping Amity? He doesn't even comment on the fact that twins aren't wearing their concealment stones. Mittens, go round up Edric and Emera. We're leaving. But Actually, that makes me wonder. We know that illusion magic is the most stigmatized track, so why would the Blight parents be fine with their children joining? I think to some extent, considering the concealment stones, Edric and Emera are held to a high degree. Not as high as Amity, but again, they still have an image to uphold. You're enjoying this, aren't you, Blight brother? It's just nice to be taken seriously for once. Reminds me of Willow, but let's put a pin in this, shall we? Back to the question. Is Elidor Blight still a bad parent? Um, yeah? Even if the episode focuses on him and Amity, it forgets to comment on him and Edric and Amira. You aren't a good parent if you're attentive to one child and distant with the others. Maybe there wasn't enough time, or the episode is once again about Amity, so they wanted to give it more focus, but it felt weird this never came up. Elsewhere, Ida finds out Warden Raph is competing. As Raph is a member of the Emperor's Coven, Ida realizes she can pick his brain to discover hidden knowledge about Bellows' inner circle. Like, why Rain actually it's so weird, or what the Day of Unity really is. Heard any good castle gossip lately? Ida, between you and me, Kiki Mora made out what a hot dog, and Flora is a saddle pusher. Raph refuses to give info, so Ida comes up with the idea of a blabber potion. At the brawl, Amity enters, disguised. Versus the Mighty Mitten! Amity uses an awful nickname to her advantage? I love it. And fun fact, I got my YouTube name under similar circumstances. While watching Amity, Goose gets another reminder. So not willing to deal with harsh emotion, she signs up for the brawl. And the other, a last minute entry, the spell it's a nice spot, but you barely made it against the Abomaton without Amity being there. You're gonna get pounded like a wad of Pillsbury dough. Back to the Blight Twins. Remember how I compared them to Willow? It turns out that like Willow, they have other talents, which they aren't encouraged to pursue. Emera likes healing, and Edric likes peacekeeping. Only, their hobbies. Edric isn't even sure he's particularly good at it, because he's mostly self-taught. You know peacekeeping magic? A little. It's just a hobby, though. Probably not any good. Edric, I know the feeling. The best thing you can do is just work at it and get better and learn from as many resources as you can. He even helps Ida and King get the ingredients for their potion and give some particularly good advice. I thought skin badgers ate chushrooms, not gore berries. Also, they're strong, so you'll need a fortified rope. Makes me wonder if they even do enjoy illusion magic, or if Odalia made them do it so they learn to love it. Actually, speaking of, here's another complaint I have. Where is Odalia? Hanging out with her friend Jeff Fisher? Is she on the moon base eating meatball sandwiches? The reason I say this is because surface-wise, she seems like the main reason the Blades are in their current state. Again, not that Alador isn't blameless, he's an enabler, but many of Amity's problems can be traced back to her. How would she take knowing Amity not only blew off Coven Triad, out, she defied them once again. And not only that, but the twins helped her. And would she take the fact that Edric and Emera are complete troublemakers under her eyes? Honestly, the Blights are a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they're the most interesting family, sometimes to the point of stealing the spotlight from other characters, but on the other, there's so many questions to be had. The brawl rages on, and Amity and Luz seem to be doing really well. Amity actually might have a chance at winning. Did the person in the bell jar blank and stop is a dead baby? The world itself is a bad dream. Understandably, they forgot about the Abomaton. If it credited, actually found an emerald dagger. Because believe it or not, those really exist. I'm not kidding. On instinct, Luz attacks the Abomaton. Because honestly, wouldn't you do the same? Which alerts Alador. Stay back! Uh, fine. If that's 
the way you want it. Hey, yeah. <gasps> Sorry, it's part of YouTubing, so I don't really mean this next comment, but loose, you freaking idiot. Why did you lie to Amity? And why did you punch the Abomaton? You know it almost tranced you last time. Come on, Amity. It's showtime. Amity has won the brawl. Time for her to face Warden Rap. This child forfeits the match. Scratch that. Time to face Daddy Wet Blanket. Elidor is pissed Amity disobeyed them. And as he doesn't have a tiny bell to ring, he decides to ring Warden Raps. I'm tired of standing around. I came here to fight. Wow, Raph, you got tiny little eyes. And Alador, you know this is treason against the Coven official. <laughs> well, damn. Alador orders Amity to get her siblings and to head home, for she has brought dishonor upon her family. Amity, once again showing character development, tells him and Luz off. No, I'm not going anywhere with you. Either of you. <gasps> Good for you. Luz finds Amity under a tree, and the two talk. Luz even goes as far as to confess her terrible secret. Her name isn't really Luz, and her mom was moving, so she stranded herself in the demon realm. Wait, wrong show. Actually, before that, let me ask you another question. What do you think happened to Luz's dad? Did he abandon Camilla before Luz was gone? Did he divorce Camilla? Is he working on an oil rig? Today's the anniversary of my dad passing away. Oh, I guess that shoots down the theory that Bellows is Luz's dad. Oh wait, I also like how she says. That's not an excuse for what I did. Like I said, it happened a while ago. I don't know, it's a small moment, but in most shows, they would act like this was a total forgiveness move on the other person's end, despite all the damage they caused. I like how Luz, in the show, acknowledged that while her bottling up was understandable, it doesn't excuse her actions. Luz, you can't well just yet. The plot is still in high gear. To help speed things along, Edric changes the recipe, and now Warden Raph goes full Lovecraftian, which means we need only one thing. I don't know what rituals you have in the human realm, but I'll help you pick some flowers and we can do something here. Is that a euphemism, Georgia O'Keefe? Elder tries to help hold off Raph, and Amity comes to help. I'm making my own choices from now on. But you're welcome. Once again, good for you, Amity. Now, Ida can ask him every question that the fandom has been dying to know, only he doesn't know squat. I don't know. I actually got demoted for stealing my co-workers' lunches. See, you lunch dealers, that's what you get. Bellows is the best boss in the world. I would work for him, even if I only got one day off a year and had to wake up at 6 a.m. I have heard some things. The Day of Unity is supposedly going to unite us with the Titan. I mean, knowing what we know now, is he really lying? I am so, so sorry. I messed everything up. Are you kidding? Illusions, beastkeeping, and potion magic? Keep it up, kid. You got a future in wild magic. You can even become a... Actually, what would you do with that skill set? Film pet food commercials? Then we get the scene that apparently redeems Alador. For the first time in a while, Amity gets to talk to him, one-on-one. -on -one. She tells him everything. The fact her and Luce are dating... I bet you didn't even know I was dating Luce. Edelin's kid? The fact she doesn't want to live up to their impossible standards, and the fact she dyed her hair purple to match an abomination. In the end, Eldor says he'll talk to Odalia, but instead of hugging, they shake hands. Can you tell Mom that? I'll talk to her. It's a start. So once again, considering all of this, is Eldor Blight a good parent? No. Like I said, his relationship with Edric and Emra is distant at best, but I like what they did with him here. You're too busy making these monsters for the Emperor, and Mom's too busy trying to dye my hair green. Something I hate way too often in cartoons is how quickly abusive or toxic parents change, or how they're forgiven. That's unrealistic. A nice pipe dream, sure, but in some cases, it's outright dangerous. I like how the Owl House found a nice compromise. Alador might be open to changing for his daughter, but 
but that doesn't change the fact he used to be incredibly controlling to the point where he was gonna ruin a kindergartner's life just to teach Amity a lesson. Not only that, but he sat back and watched butterflies while Odalia lived vicariously through her. You don't want to join the Emperor's Coven anymore, but that's... That's always been your dream. No, that's always been Mom's dream. And you just went along with it. People have posted comments like, Oh, Aldor is coded to be a certain way. But just because the writers wrote him that way doesn't excuse his actions. Can you watch Bojack? He's still a dad and responsible for his decisions. I'd say the fact he's willing to be better puts him leagues above somebody like Odalia. But that does not properly redeem him. He's just taking the first step. And in the end, I like how the show acknowledges Amity doesn't have to forgive him. Just because that's her dad. She doesn't even hug him when he offers it. She just shakes his hand. Super formal, but what else is she gonna do? The episode ends with Luce and Amity picking flowers, literally, and using a balloon to send them to the human world. Somehow, they end up at Camilla's window. And that was my video on Alador, my second one. Considering the episode reaching out, is he still a bad parent? Kinda. Obviously, he has a lot of work to do, and I wish he got proper screen time with his other children, but if he's willing to do better, he should. Still, it doesn't justify or excuse anything he's done up until now. OMG, he's kind of like a guy version of Bojack's mom. I should totally make a video on her.